Okay, here we are with Theo, and this is a new ACL. You would have seen him on a couple of reels. He is now four and a half weeks, so he's doing extremely well. On the bike, as we want people at four weeks, we definitely want them on the bike. Little thing about this, his range is actually really good. So he's getting about 120 degrees today. So at four and a half weeks, he's already at 120, which is awesome. The thing about the bike, drop that one down, Theo, is you need about 110, okay? 100 is usually not enough, about 110 degrees at the knee to get on a bike. Otherwise, you're gonna be hitching at the hip. So if he comes up into this position here, and listen, to the first sort of week sort of two and three, he could only sort of get to about here because he only had sort of 90 degrees, right? So you couldn't get a full revolution and you don't want to get a full revolution if you're going to sort of like lift the hip up to get the knee around. So you really want to go when you're on the bike at around about the week three is forward and back and forward and back until eventually you get enough range in the knee that it actually goes around and one day for him it just went boom, went around. So if you look at him here, where's the thing here? He's sitting around, you know, this sort of point here quite high, okay? So he's sitting at 120 degrees, which is enough to get him around. But, you know, with the seat a little bit high, you could probably get 110. So with this one, for him, it's really easy. And if you go through revolution for me, he's doing this with ease. And the good thing about this is, think of how many knee bends he's getting per minute, okay? Which is a lot more than the stretching he was doing before. So this sort of thing is awesome for him to try and work on his flexion, because his extension is fine, right? And with this, you're gonna get a lot of knee nourishment, you're gonna get a lot of conditioning, and it just really helps out the process. So every time he is in the gym or doing his exercises, he is on the bike, 15, 20 minutes, that sort of thing. And obviously, when he gets fitter and stronger, the resistance can increase for a bit of quads conditioning as well. So this one is more about range of movement, and conditioning of the knee, all right, for walking and things like that. It's not really about massive strength at the moment because we're still waiting for a few more weeks for healing before you really load it up. But this is a really nice one for him to free the knee up, make it feel better, and help him do his exercises straight after. So let's look at his first ones. Now, we're working on one leg of balance for quite a few weeks with Theo. We're also working on two leg of balance on the BOSU. Now, his one leg of balance is a very crucial step for him to get absolutely right. The thing about Theo, the interesting thing about his is he's got two ACLs, all right? Meaning he's had surgery on that 10 years ago for ruptured ACL, plus he's had another two surgeries for meniscal tears. This one is fresh, four and a half weeks, all right? Um, they both happened because his knee rolled inwards, all right? Now, we've discovered on Theo, like, you know, why are you getting these ACLs happening all the time? This might be for those people out there who are having recurrent ACLs, a lot of it is to do about the hip control, okay? So he's had a lifetime of rubbish glutes, okay? And so whenever he's been playing sport, playing soccer, his knees roll in quite a bit. So from now on, because we wanna work on strengthening this up, we wanna work on injury prevention, we don't want this happening again. He's gonna go back and play soccer again, we don't want this happening again. He has to work on glutes. So the first thing, in this stage, four and a half weeks, we can't do a mass amount of single leg work, but what we can do is single leg balance. So when he does that, He's got to focus on keeping that knee over the middle of his foot, okay? But he's really got to work on telling his brain that he needs to use his glute to help it out. Because if he just focuses on the foot and trying to move the foot to try and pull it out and let that be lazy, it's not going to help that programming from day one. So for him, we want to get him to squat a little bit. So he bends the knee a little bit, all right? So which gives him a bit of quads. He sits in the hip a little bit, which gives him a little bit of hit. So just lean forward a little bit, there he does. Then he squeezes his butt before he stands on one leg. So try and stand on one leg for me, Theo. Good man. And there's the control we need to get better. You see that instant little wobble? He's got to try and work on that. He has to fight hard to try and keep that knee from diving inwards. Okay, that's his big thing, all right? So this is starting from day one. It's gonna give him awesome quads activation there, a static thing for his knee, which he needs for his knee control. But the biggest thing is that hip control. So he's constantly telling his brain, squeeze my buttock, squeeze my buttock, externally rotate, externally rotate through there while he's doing it. He's not just standing on one leg with a straight knee. He's being active and he's got being very purposeful about what's happening here. Obviously a mirror in front of you is gonna really help with that alignment. Okay, so that's a really crucial one for him. He's gonna go through for the next rest of that program focusing on hip control with his rehab. It is gonna be a massive component for him to improve that and for injury prevention down the track. Now let's look at two-legged balance on a BOSU. 
Okay, so when you step on a BOSU with two legs, it's that good leg on first, or the non-surgical leg, and then this leg. Now he can do that pretty well. He's got a pole to help him, which is awesome. Now with this one, what you're trying to do is, is a lot of it is about feedback. Yes, conditioning, keeping your knee out. Can you see the shaking going on? That's your brain with a bit of weakness, but also trying to work out how to do this. Remember, this knee does not have a normal original ACL. It's lost the information from a normal ligament that goes to the brain to tell about joint space and joint awareness, okay? He's got a new one in there that hasn't got that stuff in there at the moment. So he has to learn externally from muscles and from visual and from balance and from the other leg to try and improve that. So it's very important that we get people on an unstable surface, safe, supported as he need it, to try and keep that balance going and improve that awareness. It's just time and repetition trying to hold that. Now that's about one minute at a time. It's going to be sort of five or six of those. And that will turn into a squat on a BOSU as well. So it's very important that we get used to this environment. We're going to use the BOSU a lot. And that's going to replicate unstable surfaces, which is life. So that sort of, it can start here as long as it's two leg in four weeks. And you can find he's, he's doing, he's stabilizing well, he's working well with that. Okay. So obviously with Theo, he's had hamstring surgery because he's taken a hamstring graft on the medial side for his ACL. So he needs to also work on hamstring training, all right? Not just knee flexion and quads and glutes and balance and all that sort of thing. He needs to work on specifically hamstring stuff, all right? And even with someone who has not had a hamstring graft, they still need to work on it because it helps protect the ACL. So with this one, his obviously his range, he's all already active at sort of 90 degrees. Today I can get him to about 120, okay? He gets a bit tight there. Some of that's quads, some of that's knee. For this exercise, this is called hamstring flex. So he is trying to be like a metronome, if you like. He's gonna try and go from as high as he can to about sort of 40 degrees out that way. And he's gonna go back to as high as he can. And he's trying to do it as a very rigid metronome type movement. He's trying to create body awareness of the knee, but he's also trying to get the hamstring firing and trying to do a job of slowing the knee down and stopping and then coming up and concentric and then going down and stopping eccentrically. So this one is this first one is from 90 degrees up. So go from there, where you go for me, Theo. Now you'll notice with this one, it's quite slow. This is about as quick as you can get because his firing rate is not very fast with this. But this will build and build and build and he'll get better and faster and faster and faster with it, which is gonna help him down the track. But it's also really good light hamstring loading. The hamstring at this stage for can tolerate this well. We just don't want to put any load on it. There's no, there's no bands, there's no weight machines, there's nothing. It's just his body weight. Um, and this is going to significantly help him with his hamstring. The other thing you got to work on is making sure he is dorsiflex when you do it, okay? And that sort of just really helps out that movement at the knee. This is a lot harder. I would stay in this position here, okay? So he needs to try and go up as high as he can go. Up, back, up, back, up, back, up up back. Now the thing about this is if he goes to his limit all the time without overcooking it, he gets some strengthening in here because this part here, that tightness there is like a handbrake for the hamstring. So it's like weights, if you like, for the hamstring. So he's getting some extra strengthening rather than just sitting out here where there's no resistance. Okay. If he gets to the resistance part without overdoing it, then he'll also get a bit of knee flexion stretch. Okay. But the quads deactivation, if you like, so that reciprocal inhibition of the quads when he uses hamstring is gonna help him release his quads and get his flexion better. So this is a, sort of a dual purpose one. It's not just for the hammy and firing and timing, it's also to help try and release the quad and get that knee into flexion more, which is part of how it gets looser. The other range is down here. So he's gonna go from sort of right in that outer range hamstring up to about where he left the other one, so about sort of 40, 45 degrees. So, He's not allowed to tap the floor. Again, the same sort of style. So try and do that for me, Theo. Okay, and you can see what happens is this whole leg sort of shakes around a little bit. What I want him to do though, is tell his brain, squeeze your glute while you're doing it. Okay, just to help the process a little bit more. So he's spending more time on thinking, okay, I need to have my glute part of the family here. I need this involved, all right? Not just being lazy and doing nothing. If you can switch that on and give him some stability up in the hip, and make that part of the sort of hamstring movement, then you're gonna do a lot better with the hip control stuff down the track as well. Okay, last one for the day, again, is a hamstring one. 
this is your hamstring drop. So this is again, very similar to the one we just before, did before, but it's sort of more of a weight bearing thing. This is gonna help him with his walking. Now, when he stands on his right leg, and the thing about him when he's, he's standing right leg for me, good. Now, he's again trying to come up as high as he can go, but it's all the way down. He's gonna quickly come down and meet his other foot at that point there, and then launch back up again. So he's doing hamstring curls if you like, just body weight, active but he's coming down as quick as he can without injuring the hamstring, and he's got to try and meet that line. So try that for me, Theo. That's it. Good. Now, what I try and tell people is think of that line there. You can imagine like a wall, and you're gonna kick a wall, but you're not allowed to stub your toe. So he's not allowed to hit the wall. There's a wall here, he can't hit it, and that's trying to improve his awareness of where his knee is in space, plus bend his knee, release his quads, strengthen his hamstring. Okay, so it's a very nice dual purpose. The interesting thing we thought about, we saw about this and what he commented on, is if you have a look, come around and have a look at this. Well, just, just face around that way for me, Theo. When he stood on his right leg, and we talked about the glute not being very strong and why he maybe had busted his ACLs in the first place, is when he stood on his right leg, he tended to lean over this way. So he tended to lean his body weight over. Now that's a clear indication that that glute is not doing enough work to try and help hold him stable on one leg, that he has to sort of tilt his upper body to keep his center of gravity, okay? So a weak glute system here, mainly glute me, is when if you stand on one foot and then you lurch over, then you know that this is not doing good enough work. So to combat that, what he has to do is while he's doing stuff on his left, he's really focusing on his right, keep his knee externally rotated to neutral here, don't let it internally rotate like the old habits, keep it out here and keep that out there, keep his buttocks squeezed in external rotation. So he's squeezing outwards, then he stands on one leg. So do that for me, good. So yes, yeah, that's it. Has to hold on a little bit, okay? And in time, that'll get better, all right? So that's part of the process. And what we'll get him doing is doing the same thing on that leg, bending this knee, so he's getting both on each side. So that's him for this week. We'll go through a squat and his deadlift next week.